right, so thanks everyone. Uh, I'm from uh, Immer, responsible for engineering there. Immer is a um, startup or a basically an, a company funded out of a project from T-Labs, Deutsche Telekom. And uh, I want to talk to you about uh, what we're doing uh, in terms of innovating in the voice area as a um, basically a unit or a funded company of a carrier. Uh, what complicates these things, how we shape focus compared to last year. So if you want to see what we talked last year about, introducing Immer in detail, the technology stack we use, where we're standing between the intersection of mobile network operators and internet communication services, you can uh, click the link in my presentation. There's a video about it. Uh, we talk about our production model using AWS, uh, Kubernetes, everything automated, uh, the integration into the NATCOs and to the countries of uh, the telecoms. That's not what today is about. Today is more about um, first of all, shortly highlighting the USP and then saying how we differentiate or try to differentiate in a world that is basically on one hand has the telco and classical mindset, classical assets, and on the other hand is the internet where everything uh, is possible. So uh, our biggest USP, um, uh, you often ask like how do you differentiate to WhatsApp and so on. I would say our biggest USP is looked at best from the, from the opposite side, how we differentiate towards from telephony, right? And I would say we, we lift up telephony into the um, expectations you have for a service uh, in the 21st century. You could call it digital voice and video, I would rather call it 21st century um, voice and video, not to be called out by Dean for one, but uh, <laughs> also for many other reasons, because actually uh, if you tell somebody um, that an email service would only be available on a single device um, connected with a single, let's say, physical uh, physical cable uh, to the to the cloud, or be it virtual or be it um, be it physical, you wouldn't uh, basically accept this. But uh, with uh, your voice communication from carriers, that your, the voice communication you're actually paying for, you're still accepting that. So what we're doing is we lift the boundary, take it off traditional telephony, and put your phone number in the cloud, which means uh, you have it inside an application on your phone. Uh, the application can run on multiple phones. The application can run on web browsers, and basically we remove the constraint between the physical card and the a number on the uh, on the SIM card, um, uh, and in the end, uh, you have the possibility to use um, an up-to-date 21st century voice and video communication service on any device and any network you would like. Um, the differentiation towards messengers is that this all of this works basically also with your uh, with your real phone number for real telephone conversations. So if your grandmother calls you from a fixed line, you can pick up the call in a browser and uh, you can basically text from a browser. You will see it synchronized to your Android phone and your iOS phone, all happening in the in the network. And uh, our positioning is, I would say, connecting the best of both worlds. Uh, on one hand, we have the uh, telecoms on the left side, telecoms kind of mindset, telecoms uh, approaches. On the right side, we have the internet ones. Of course, if you're coming from a carrier, what you want to do is you want to um, use basically the technolo technology stack you have available as an operator, be it network wise, be it, um, uh, let's say, um, yeah, access wise, core network wise, all the, th all the things that, um, including phone numbers actually, so all the things that uh, differentiate a carrier. On the other hand, uh, if you want to innovate, you could do it on a complete green field, just build an app, build a communication app that many companies did before. Uh, we think we can kind of position ourselves in between and take the best of both worlds to, uh, to deliver some new experience and improved experience to the users. The same happens in the way that uh, product development works. What you will see is that uh, on one hand we have dependencies, and I'll mention these, on uh, still having the requirement of using standardized interoperable uh, communication. We don't want to build yet another island, so our service is very, very open from both, let's say, looking at a carrier perspective, also from the internet perspective, uh, very open. Um, uh, however, the requirements we have, of course, are somewhat defined by uh, by, our, by our owner, which is the carrier that basically pays for, pays for us at the moment. And on the other hand, we have uh, the software development in the internet style, I would say, which is very agile, very flexible, being able to react on differentiating requirements quickly. And again, we try to kind of compose uh, uh, ourselves and our capabilities, use them best uh, somewhat, uh, somewhat in between. And that's also true in regard to the service delivery. So um, on one hand, you have to be carrier grade, whatever that means. So you have to fulfill some requirements uh, a carrier has. Uh, if these requirements are false, uh, and I'll come later to that, you have to educate them and find somewhat a good compromise of being able to, on one hand, have a service that um, is an evolution from telephony, uh, does not differentiate too much that customers don't recognize it anymore. But on the other hand, of course, be, um, be working on the internet and be comparable and uh, can position itself within the app ecosystem. When we started Emmer, the idea was always to kind of build an uh, operator, uh, um, let's say, 
uh, an internet communication service from an, from an operator perspective, having requirements from both the internet world as well as the operator world. So of course, uh, we want to do it like all the internet companies are doing it with the speed of software development, not, uh, not in the speed of infrastructure rollout. That's, I think, very important. That's one of, the, one of the key things we have in mind also when it comes to time to market. Uh, we will, of course, uh, include or have to include all capabilities that other internet communication services have. Um, I would say we might reduce them a bit in, in their feature richness because uh, in the beginning, let's say, being, being kind of a bridge technology, we need to do some compromises, but overall customers have expectations because it's not the telecoms that set the, the expectations for communications apps, it's the internet companies. Uh, we want to use state-of-the-art internet technologies. Uh, that means uh, we, we use the microservice architecture, RESTful APIs, and so on, containerization. I've explained that in the past uh, last year's uh, meeting here. And of course, no artificial limitations. So operators still think in, in, let's say, interconnect. They still think in countries. They still have a concept such as roaming. Uh, we, we, we know we have to have this to some extent, but we also want to do an education, let's say, in dialogue with the, the carriers uh, to kind of um, loosen that uh, artificial limitation up a bit. On the other hand, we have, uh, let's say, things contributing to that approach from the operator world. So as I said, we, it's part of our identity. We are not an, a pure internet startup. So um, we, we mustn't and we don't want to contradict the ongoing IP transformations. If you're familiar with uh, voice over LTE, uh, video over LTE, even RCS, all these kind of initiatives are there. Whether or not, um, let's say, they, they should be there is uh, not, or we don't want to argue. What we try to do is to fit in and to actually be um, yeah, using whatever uh, useful assets they provide and not to interfere uh, with them. Uh, we don't want to uh, revolutionize the charging model. So while some co communication basically will be free if it's from app to app, uh, as soon as you do a, a breakout call, uh, this breakout call will, be, will still be paid. So we're not trying to throw, let's say, free minutes to the customers. We want to we differentiate with the experience. Um, utilize existing user identity. Uh, we had the discussion also earlier. You still have your E164 number. We want to leverage it and basically use this number you had for the last 20 years, not just give you a new number and say it's now virtualized, but really to, to do it with your existing number and uh, to do it, yeah, uh, minimum invasive. So we, we, don't, we don't require a core network uh, update or anything like that, not a project over five years. If you integrate with us as a carrier, the idea is to do that in the course of weeks or a few months, right? So what happened from, from last year? I was saying we were shaping focus. Actually, what we did is we launched Immer, the black version that you saw last year that is still in our brand, kind of. Um, we launched it in Slovakia, and uh, we have basically shown and proven to DT that we are able to, to do what we always um, talked about. We can launch a communication service that's actually integrated with the carrier network, and they quickly decided, well, if you can do that, it's much harder for us to market it under a separate brand. We would like to have that thing in Magenta. So we focused the last year on actually um, white labeling the black version of Immer to Magenta, um, improving some of the things uh, and some of the partnerships we had from the past uh, that were, let's say, developed more uh, based on uh, previous relationships, uh, but not really best of breed. So we, we replaced various um, uh, vendors. Uh, we improved uh, parts that were not working. We integrated deeper into the network that we couldn't do based on time and based on resource shortage uh, on the NATCO side. On the carrier side, it was usually not, was not on our side, but really uh, because there were limitations on the carrier. So the, the telecom product uh, became a magenta. Uh, it became more focused. We removed some features as well, like multi-numbering. And on the other hand, we really tried to focus with our own development um, to, to target market trials and to target basically a support of, of, of sharpening the product development that mostly came, let's say, um, with requirements from the carrier, with, with our own product development and actually user-driven feature development. So what we're also doing in parallel is we're going to do a UK trial uh, with an own app uh, that is called Orbit. It will be available in, uh, in the app store shortly in iOS and there will be a Mac app and, and a web app. And we basically uh, want to see um, how multi-numbering uh, can be added better into the app than we did before. We want to do some learnings. Uh, we will basically provide additional numbers. We'll provide minutes for, for, for calling. And we want to test um, whether or not we have, it's actually commercially viable to do multi-numbering, whether it's commercially viable as a separate thing or rather as an inbuilt thing to our own application. Um, in the past, we were offering UK numbers in Slovakia, which was not really that like use case wise that good. but their regulatory purposes. Um, we did it for, and actually, this is yeah, this is this is um, another trial where we want to focus on with a different product, um, a bit of different approach, let's say, than the carrier approach, and again, uh, learn something. So we are becoming active in in multiple spaces. Uh, the Slovak version, this Magenta, uh, the Magenta version will be launched this month in Slovakia, and actually this week, 
we are going to launch uh, Orbit in the UK. I wanted to say we launched today, but actually we don't launch today, so it was planned, but uh, it cannot make an announcement here. Um, but that's what we're basically doing. Uh, and I want to spend the next, uh, next, few, uh, next few minutes um, on uh, in the second half of the presentation actually on the challenges evolving uh, carrier voice communication for and with a carrier. And the focus here is really evolving carrier voice communication, not build something standalone separately, uh, a new, let's say, uh, yeah, uh, communication service platform or, or, you know, DT is not going there and say, we need our own OTT service, let's say. They, they, are, not, they are not doing that. They're saying we, we have a voice service and together with an innovative team, we want to we innovate it. And um, the key constraints that I saw um, that um, we cannot meet yet, uh, but that is somewhat expected and where we needed to do a lot of, a lot of, let's say, education. And this is basically about how we needed to educate the carrier because the expect expectancy was, of course, we're going to have a magenta dialer on that phone and the experience should be at least as good as the native dialer is, but much, much better because we now have an application. And of course, this is only possible with a few trade-offs. Uh, so the, the first thing is what we, what we often talk about with, with carriers, that's why it's in the first place, dedicated um, a, a quality bearer. So operators in their mindset are very quality of service driven. They, they say, well, you know, if you have a dedicated, uh, dedicated communication line from A to B, uh, the call must be perfect, nothing can go wrong. Basically, like phone calls worked for the last, um, for the last decades. Um, we rather believe in, uh, in quality of experience, so usually our, our Aim is to make the call uh, to make the call work better and to make it uh, adaptive for multiple uh, network scenarios. Um, thinking about also how uh, how basically everything transforms. So you might be uh, calling on networks on IP networks that you don't own on Wi-Fi. You might be uh, putting in a different SIM card. So we want to make sure that the service works everywhere, not just in a quality controlled network. Of course, that's part of it, but that's not. Let's say that shouldn't be the the the, the whole limitation of it. So that was very hard, kind of to. Discuss. Another thing is the roaming concept. So carriers have issues there that I've seen also myself um, about about applying roaming in a, in a world of IP. So for example, when they even transition their own service that is voice over uh, LTE capable to voice over Wi-Fi, some artificially again limit it not to allow usage outside of the country because of course then the user is not roaming but has is calling with local rates. So this is something that they have to they have to wrap their heads around. And of course, if you have an an application that mostly connects uh, via, via IP to the, basically to the back end, then, then you don't have roaming anymore. You're always IP connected. If you're in a roaming scenario, you have uh, a higher price for the data connection or it's subsidized somewhat in, but, uh, but you, you, you don't think you're roaming if you, if you use an application, right? Nobody would think Twitter is more expensive somewhere else as a service. You would only know that you consume more data or you look a bit closer to the, to the data consumption, but not the service as such. Uh, so that, that was one of the, one of the constraints, um, in-call handover is, a, is an important topic. So of course we are, um, uh, we are an application. We support uh, any kind of scenarios uh, connecting to our platform and, and disconnecting. So you can, uh, as I said before, the numbers virtualize. If I get a normal call, I can answer on any IP connected device, vice versa. If I'm not having any connectivity, I can use in-app communication for free, also using the, the carrier access. So if I would call with my, with my Slovak number, um, anyone, let's say Alan has the application, I call him uh, or he calls me as an in-app call, it would always be free independently of uh, whether I'm connected to the network, packet switch or circuit switched. Um, the carrier spent a great effort in, in allowing in-call handover. That means during a call, you can leave basically an IP network, uh, go to a circuit switch network for us. This is seen as something very complex and nothing we want to focus on, so we rather think a uh, user is usually connected, uh, and for those scenarios where he isn't, we provide a, a fallback. But there's a kind of trade-off in, in complexity that we put into versus uh, versus experience. I think a nice quote, I don't know if Dean, you said it, or if it was Martin in the Future Voice Workshop, was basically, we should go to a scenario where it works better most of the time, then it doesn't matter if it works worse some of the times, right? So and that's exactly our, our thinking as well. As, as, soon as, as soon as you cover many scenarios and have a high-definition end-to-end connection most of the times, if you sometimes don't, if even sometimes a call drops, even normal network calls drop these days, right? So that's that's something we, we are happy, and let's say, to live with, and we try to optimize other scenarios to really be, let's say, outstandingly good or really, really better, uh, but but um, some of the things here um, are worth discussing because this is usually what comes up in discussions, right? The carrier people, the technical people we're asking, they're immediately asking these kind of questions, can you do that? And if you can, you're disqualified. What I want to highlight here is that basically some of the benefits uh, we, we get, uh, and especially for differentiating, because that's what is, what is the key to, to doing something like um, Immer or the Magenta version of it, is actually differentiating. 
Um, another problem is the application lifecycle requirements. So people actually in operators still think it's, it's hard to download an app and customers, you know, you need to pre-install this thing, otherwise nobody will ever use it. Well, if you're good enough, it will be used, right? And, and you need to anyways, it's, we don't want to give a product, let's say, force it to the customers. We, we, we want them to use it and we want to understand um, what, it, uh, what it means to, it, uh, to, to use it and to have the service because there's a certain awareness needed. You cannot just say, you know, if you're not 100% uh, compatible uh, like, the, like the carrier technologies are, it's actually good that it's an application because there's a certain expectation behind it. So we see this rather as, as a benefit. And the last point is, of course, regulatory requirements are usually built in the carrier networks that they build uh, because they get it from big vendors and have all the things that they need. For us, it requires development. So here again, uh, we need clear, um, clear, clear requirements shaped. So the point here is that I think, again, this differentiating experience, the same thing is basically, uh, we discussed RCS already on every conference I've been, people say, well, or people said, because it was already five years ago, they said um, it, it, it was a good idea, but we would like to differentiate here and there. And that's exactly what you cannot do with approaches like RCS, right? So our point is that um, if you want to differentiate, you need to take basically certain, certain drawbacks into, uh, into account in order to get really all the, all the benefits in it. And, and the understanding uh, that I have is that the, the, uh, if we look at the magenta value proposition and its characteristics, the benefits really outweigh the drawbacks. I said already, if we, if we innovate on telephony, we actually make telephony without any big network update and without any, any modification, any vendor change requests, any waiting time for, for years. We make it multi-device capable. We make it browser capable even, so it works on any device that can run a Chrome browser. You can use your phone now. You can log in your phone. You see your contacts. Um, uh, this is basically working. It's independent of the SIM card. So even, uh, you know, you can, have a, you can have a device with a SIM card on Wi-Fi. You can have a device without a SIM card on Wi-Fi. It's completely agnostic. Um, the, uh, we can do internet communication over circuit switch networks. So basically, that's the use case I already said. Um, if two WhatsApp users are disconnected from IP, uh, that might not happen that often. But when it happens, they cannot communicate with our service. You can actually communicate in-app. Um, we integrate with the tariff, so again, it's a very low friction thing. Um, you don't need to buy minute packages or anything. Usually, you, you still have a, a subscription with a carrier, and if you use the phone, you can call any number in the world, and you will be billed according to your plan, which means mostly the call is anyways in your package already. And if it isn't, then we, can, uh, we will bill it um, to, your, to your phone bill. Uh, we can adapt actually better than uh, legacy technology can to IP network changes, so in Volta, usually what is rolled out today, when you're on an IP network on 4G and you have a Volta call, you go to 3G and you go again in an area with 4G, you're not again upgraded to a Volta call, but you stay in 3G. Same as with, with 2G. There are mechanisms for this, but again, the vendors, at least when I did the rollout in Slovakia, were not able to, to, to do that yet. We can fully jump up and down the IP stack, always using the best connectivity. Um, and if we don't have any IP network, uh, then the call will drop, but then you can use the circuit switch connection. So the only thing is the, the on-call handover that we don't have. And of course, we are, we are very close to getting actually real phone-like behavior in the applications, right? We can almost natively integrate, even on iOS. Everybody always says you cannot integrate to iOS. Actually, with CallKit, uh, you can do as, as much as you can. You, have, you can do call switches. You can, do, uh, you, can, you can answer the call without unlocking your, your phone. So we're getting very, very close there. And all of this is possible, actually, with an application. On the other hand, of course, there are some drawbacks that operating systems limit you. On one example is that you cannot really remove the green button from it just yet. <laughs> so it's still a phone. You cannot make it uh, on iOS at least, also the default. But again, if you're an app, you anyways have to be good enough that the customer wants it to be the default, right? So force replacing anyways is an option. And it's complex to explain, right? In this audience, you understand, hopefully, or if, if I say you virtualize a phone number and can answer on every device. For normal customers, it's still a, it's still a topic. Let's, let's say the biggest differentiator is really really hard to communicate. And that's, I think, one of the, one of the challenges that we have, but um, that we are, I would say we're getting there. It's a hard thing, but, uh, but again, I'm, um, yeah, I'm many years, for many years, I'm trying to basically um, tell uh, within DT colleagues and everyone uh, that, that uh, we need to do something different. And I think the, the evolutionary part for, for telephony is um, yeah, quite, well, quite well addressed in the new proposition that we have. To conclude, let's say where we are in terms of our platform and, and partnerships, I would say we are very well on, on track to getting to a scalable production. Uh, we are now have, uh, again, improved the automated testing. We have continuous deployment processes. We look with uh, code quality testing. What we're working on now is uh, actually getting really uh, audio and video quality engineers to really optimize scenarios. Uh, what is the best scenario for an in-app call? What is the best scenario for a breakout call? 
How can you even, you know, how can you detect certain scenarios where you might want to do a fallback call before it starts? Uh, so when you're in a car, for example, and you have you have a very, very, or when you're in the, in the edge of a cell, uh, you might want to behave differently. So we are really trying to get into optimizing things as, as much as we can. The DevOps it gets really improved. So automation, Kubernetes, as, as mentioned last year, we are improving internal processes using Helm for configuration management by the developers and getting that basically, um, yeah, very well managed. And again, we, we no longer call our end devices UEs as, as the telcos usually do. So it's, the touch point is important. We really look into quality of experience, differentiating user experience for the legacy service. Um, that's, I would say, from the, from the production model and, and how we work. Um, of course, we continue integrating with the telco stack. What I presented last year was an integration with the intelligent network service because all the other stuff wasn't, wasn't there. It's still not there, but we're getting there. So what we're looking at in the future is integrating with Voice or LTE. Uh, with uh, where's the Wi-Fi as well. Uh, there's even the RCS logo, so that's something that is coming because it uh, needs to come, but it's, again, going to be just a, a fallback in case there's nothing better to use. Um, and we, we, further, we work on further improving it, like uh, getting an integration into the IT systems that are streamlined throughout DT. Um, if they have long-term propositions they want to test, we enable them to do that with a much faster time to market and much less effort. And of course, uh, also improve our platforms. I've listed just a few partners here that are also part of, um, of, of the event here. I, I call it like-minded partnerships. I think it's very, very important that you have, uh, if you do something like this, that you have, that you first of all decide make versus buy. And if you buy something, do it with partners that are good. And uh, I think with uh, the GenBand story, and uh, we, we use Candy basically as the main part of our backend, the ribbon GenBand story I've mentioned already last year, they're a very good partner for this uh, and they run a huge part of our back end. We work now also with Nettouch, which is a, a partner of Gemband. It's actually very good and of course with Telestax. So um, the Telestax story somehow is now in its third year. <laughs> Last year, um, that was a short break before I did a hackathon in, in Slovak Telecom with them and now we actually use the Telescale platform. Uh, as I mentioned before, we had, a, we had another platform before but this was not best suited for, for what we are looking at. And especially if we also look at the telco stack extension, you need to have, first of all, products that can support this kind of uh, mixed setup that we have. And you need, of course, also people on the other side that, that speak your language. And I think, uh, yeah, the companies here do that. Uh, and um, yeah, that's, I think, what, what I want to conclude with. So thanks for your attention. If you have questions or want to see a demo, we can do that in the break. Um, and yeah, you can also text me or whatever. So thanks. Excellent. Thank you so much, Sebastian.